So I'm washing a fleece. This year I decided to keep as much of the lock structure intact. So I'm using this tool and wrap it around as like a one packet. Here, there you go. Packet. And then clipping the end with one of those uh, snack snack clip um, thingy. Um, this is the first to soak, so this was a cold water, just to kind of relax the fiber and get the dirt out without um, working on the lanolin. And I'm actually um, boiling some water to start actually scouring this fleece, which is a Jacob from Marshmallow Farm. Um, I also have a bag of um, London things. So this was kind of um, left over, like things that I couldn't really put it into the lock, neat, neatly uh, aligned lock structure, but nonetheless still a good fiber. So I put those in the mesh bag and then soaked it. Um, so I am going to dump this water wait for the hot water to boil and then start the scouring process so the studio got kind of noisy so hello this is me from the past recording voiceover so here i am making a hot water uh, so my studio have only one stove top so i can make only so much boiling water at a time so i am using this big stock pot to make a batch of hot water uh, in order to process lanolin, you do need a hot water. It doesn't need to be boiling water, but it does need a hot water that you can't even um, touch. So I am bringing this over to where the container is, and I am using this Muji plastic container to process fleece. Um, I could use a lot of containers to process bigger batch, but again, um, I am capped by how much hot water I can make at a time. So I am just doing three buckets at a time. Um, I am dividing the hot water equally to three. And this time I am using a eucaline as a detergent, which is kind of funny. I am trying to get rid of um, lanolin, but eucaline is a detergent that has some lanolin in it. Um, I have used down before, like many other fiber processing liquids, but I didn't really like the fleece smelling all down. I wanted to smell like sheep and I wanted to leave some of the lanolin in. So this time I decided to use Eucline. Um, here you can see I am putting the fiber back into the bucket. This fleece wasn't particularly greasy. So I am filling this bucket to the top so that the just enough water is in the bucket to submerge all of the fiber. If I am processing more greasy uh, fleece, then I will need more water in the container or less fiber in the container to have a more uh, wiggle swishing room to kind of open up the fiber and melt the lanolin. But this time um, you can see just barely to the top of the fiber is what I have water for. And this was completely fine. So I am, it's too hot to touch. So I am using lid of the container to swish them in and then put the lid back in and leave it for 20 to 30 minutes. Um, that in my studio comes down to just about how long it's gonna take me to make another batch of hot water. So I made another batch of hot water. So taking this out from the washing cycle, as you can see, the water is now brown and milky uh, from the soap and the melted lanolin. At this point, the water is still hot, hotter than your bath water. Uh, so I am just going hot, 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 hot on the hand, but just lightly squeezing to get the dirty water out and then replace this water with clean water for rinsing cycle. I am going to dump this dirt water into different container and dump this outside. Uh, this one contains dirt from the sheep and melted lanolin in it. So I will not pro dump this into a regular drain because it will clog the pipe from the grease. So putting the hot water back in and same deal, same amount of water and putting back the fiber. 
the water, the the washing water and the rinsing water needs to be about the same temperature in order to not shock the fiber. Uh, going from cold to hot or hot to cold, that process shock the fiber and felt the fiber. So when you're washing the fleece, you need to make sure that the temperature is not exactly have to be the same, but about the similar ball pack. So here I am, made another hot water. Um, this is the second and final rinse. So I am dumping all of the contents from three buckets into one hot water bucket. I am just lightly squeezing it and putting them into the clean water. And the final rinse, I am not going to let it sit. It is just to make sure that I get all of the soapy water out before I squeeze them and then dry them. If I am processing second batch of fleece, uh, this water that's left in the container that was the first rinse, it's going to be the first wash water for the second batch of fleece because this is still hot. And I might add more boiling water to bring the temperature up. But, you know, again, um, I'm capped by how much hot water I can make at a studio. So I uh, to save the water, I am using the same water to use for washing process. Right, so I just took them out of the packet and laid them out. And here's a comparison. So this is the lock that is unwashed. And compared to, like, this might look yellow, but compared to this, you can see how all of these got very clean and white. And the yellow bit is just either sunburned or naturally colored the fiber. So um, this is not dirt, it's just the color of the fleece. And you can see there is a lot of veg matter. So this fleece was labeled as coated, which means they had this um, jacket on to prevent sunburn and the um, veg matter is going in. But this is like high, high veg matter. And then I've seen these tips are a bit dry and brittle. I'm wondering if it was mislabeled as uncorded. Um, either way, the fibers are very soft and nice, and I am going to comb this anyway, so these big bits of um, veg matter will easily fall out, and uh, nothing that is like unsolvably tangled on the tip or anything. So all of these will fall out while I am preparing and spinning. So I am going to put this in a drying rack and then store them until I start processing. Music